A couple years ago, I built this extra large, super deep slatted planter. I love the design, but the dimensions were way off. It's huge. In my defense, it was a custom request from a friend. Apparently she wanted to plant some deep rooted vegetables or something like that. Anyways, my mom also loved the design and asked if I could build a similar planter for some flower boxes she had just like these ones. So that's what we're going to do today. And thanks to some requests over on Instagram, I'm also going to add a secret hidden storage compartment underneath. And by the way, there are plans available for this build and you'll find a link in the description down below. All right, let's get started. To build this planter, I'm using pressure treated fence boards. Cedar is also a good choice, but I'm going with a more budget friendly option. I often find that fence boards are cracked or damaged on the ends, so I'll start by cutting one end off all the boards to get a nice clean edge. My goal is to make consistent even slats with square edges. I'll first shave the edge off all of the boards to get a nice square edge. I can then move the fence over to the final dimension and rip all my boards, getting two slats out of each fence board. Fence boards tend to be all cupped and warped, so be mindful with the saw. I highly recommend using all the safety features your saw has to offer, like the blade guard, anti-kickback paws, and push sticks. With all the slats ripped to width, I can finish off the cuts at the miter saw using a stop block to ensure I get a consistent length for all the slats. I'll start by cutting all the long ones first, then cut all the short ones. For the inside framing of the planter, I'm using these cedar 2x4s. Just as before, I'll cut them to length, then square up one edge. I can then rip them into square legs, getting two out of each 2x4. If you look at the design closely, you'll notice that there are no visible screws on the outside of the planter. And that's why I'm going to assemble it the way I'm about to show you. All right, with all the lumber cut, it's time for assembly. I'm going to assemble four panels, essentially the four walls, then connect those four panels together to create the planner. I've made a few different variations of these and now I find it's easiest to use a straight edge on one side and clamp the first board to the top edge of my workbench. This should make sure that everything stays aligned during assembly. I cut up a bunch of spacers out of some scrap plywood and laid everything out. So far so good. I'll now attach one of the cedar legs the key here is to use one of the extra slats as a spacer on the outside edge. So I'll just drop that in here and push the leg right up to it and flush it up at the top. I'll start by securing the top screw to make sure that doesn't move. I can then drill pilot holes for every single slat, just eyeballing it and secure the leg to each of the slats using an outdoor decking screw. I'll repeat the same process for the other side using the slat as a spacer on the outside edge, then secure the leg with screws after first making pilot holes, making sure it's flush at the top. I'll add a third leg in the middle to complete the panel. I noticed I was getting a gap when driving the screws in the middle leg. It's hard to get leverage here to be able to push down, so I improvise using a quick solution with a piece of wood. By clamping it down to the edge of the table, I could press down on it and get the leverage I needed to close the gap while I drove in the screws. Problem solved. And with that, my first panel is done. Only three more to go. I assembled the second large panel, then moved on to the smaller side panels. The assembly process is essentially the same here, but with two important differences. First, instead of using a slat as a spacer, I'm actually going to use another one of the cedar legs. This will ensure everything fits like pieces of a puzzle when I go to assemble the planter. And second, I'm going to pre-drill the pilot holes I'll need to secure the four panels together later. Trust me, doing this now will save me a lot of headaches later. Again, I'm just eyeballing the location of the screws here, aiming for in between the slats so the screws won't interfere with each other. All right, with that done, I can assemble the two remaining panels. Once all four panels are assembled, the planner should come together like a puzzle. Just be sure to have a few clamps on hand. I'll use one clamp to secure each of the four corners, making sure that the top edges are flush with each other.
I'll then use a couple longer clamps to squeeze the bottoms together. I won't lie, it's a tight space to get these screws in here, but it helps to drive them at an angle and also helps to use a compact driver like this one. I'll leave a link to this and all the tools I use down in the description below. Next, I'm going to add a shelf to support these flower boxes. I measured the height of the boxes and I'll mark that height on each of the inside posts. I can then drop in the supports and secure them using more decking screws. I ripped another fence board in half and secured it to the supports, loosely spacing them. Again, just eyeballing it here. Did I mention I'm going to be adding a secret hidden storage in here? I'm getting there, be patient, but planning ahead, I'll flip the planner over and add some supports on the bottom as well for a soon to be added shelf. Before getting to the secret door, I'm going to trim out the top. I ripped a few more fence boards into slats and I'll start by cutting one side at a 45 degree angle. I can then line it up with the corner and mark the other side. Then make the cut. I'll do the same for the shorter sides, then test it out to make sure all the pieces fit just right. If you've seen my old planner build video, you'll notice I use pocket screws to attach the trim. But I've since moved on to simply using glue and brad nails, and it's held up well over the years. Just make sure you're using exterior type 3 waterproof glue. After dropping all the pieces into place, I like to use clamps to get the alignment just right with the miters nice and tight. Then go around with a nail gun to secure the trim. Then wipe up any squeeze out with a damp towel. Okay, it's time for the secret hidden storage. Now I've thought through different ways of doing this, but ultimately this seems like the easiest solution. Plus, it'll be truly unnoticeable and won't affect the aesthetics of the design. I'll use this pull saw from Princess Auto to cut out the door. It has a really thin blade, which is perfect for this. After making a few strategically placed cuts, the front panel should fall out and reveal the inner guts. To hold the door in place, I'm going to use these rare earth magnets, which are super strong. I was pretty excited when I found these ones that can be screwed on instead of glued on. All I have to do is screw a pair onto the door and another pair onto the frame and voila. Well, that is until I realized that this wouldn't actually work. Because of the polarity of the magnets, one of them needs to be flipped around to face the other way, which means it can't be screwed down. Oh. So I mixed up some five minute epoxy and used that to secure the magnets into the frame face down. While that cured, I cut the floorboards to size and used a jigsaw to cut notches where needed. I was eager to finish at this point, so I just used nails to secure the shelf. All right, moment of truth. I was assuming I would probably need to add another pair of magnets to the bottom of the door, but these magnets are super strong. So it looks like that's a wrap on this project. Now all I need to do is wait for spring to finally arrive here in Montreal so I can fill up this planter with actual flowers, not the staged house plants you see here. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to grab the plants if you're interested. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.